um, and welcome to Your Practices webinar series on advanced packaging, specifically for photo advanced photonics packaging. I'm Ramzi Salim, uh, the Your Practice lead at Tyndall National Institute. Where at Tyndall we focus on uh, system integration and advanced photonics packaging uh, in the scope of Euro practice. This webinar continues on the series where we step into the world of advanced photonics packaging. In the first episode, uh, we introduced the topic of photonics packaging and what it is and why, why we need it. In today's episode, we'll go deeper into, into that world, into the world of photonics packaging. And we'll look at packaging design rules, best practices, and the most common pitfalls and mistakes, things to avoid. But before we jump into it, uh, just to get you familiar with the Zoom platform, uh, some of you might have already used it. Um, there is a Q&A section. So if you have questions, it's probably better than the, even than the chat screen. Um, you can put in your questions there um, and we'll collate them and answer the questions in a dedicated Q&A session after the talk. But without any further delay, let me introduce you to my co-host and speaker today, Dr. Francesco Flores, head of the training programs at uh, Tyndall National Institute, who will be talking you through uh, the packaging design rules. Over to you, Francesco. Thanks, Ramsey. So, hi, everybody. Well, uh, today I want just to introduce you a couple of, let's say, basic rules that we call the packaging design rules. And uh, even if they are basic, uh, they are really fundamental. The main reason why they are fundamental is that uh, they ensure that uh, your photonic integrated circuit is compatible with our packaging designs, procedures, and machines inside the lab. So the first step to join us and uh, to apply these design rules also in your packaging design is uh, using the packaging design rules that you can find within the Euro practice. And uh, I will show you mainly the optical connections. So what are the rules that uh, you should follow from the optical point of view? And uh, just uh, one hint about the electrical connections. I will talk to you about the bone pads for DC connections. Then uh, I will show you which are the rules that we use to design, let's say properly, the PCBs, uh, which means that we do not have any problem in order to attach the fiber or wire bonds or whatever type of connection you need to interact and use your photonic integrated circuit. Then a short overview of a couple of design packaging options, mainly edge coupling and grating coupling. Then an example of what is a fully packaged module. So a solution that is an off-the-cell solution. Then final device and uh, some do's and dozen, something that uh, will help you to, let's say, have a better result uh, regarding your device. And in the end, uh, as already Ramsey introduced you, the Q&A session. So first step is design rules, where you can find them online. Just go on the Europractice website and you can download for free our document. Inside what you can find mainly hints about how you can place properly grating couplers or DC bonds, something about the arrangement or RF bonds, then the availability of fiber arrays. Again, you will choose between different geometries for the coupling of the light in and out of your peak. Then the so-called optical shunt. There is a, a specific circuit, super easy, that we use to align the optical fiber arrays with your pick. Then we use an epoxy to glue and secure these fibers on top of the optical shunt and on top of your photonic integrated circuit. So what is the epoxy and why is so crucial to know the basics at least of how to use it. And then again, best practices, suggestions, and whatever you need to contact us. The first step is packaging design rules. The zero order rule is we define a compass-like coordinate system that we use to label the peak. 
In this way, for example, we can define specific areas on the photonic integrated circuit, just calling them the north, south, east, and west side. And for example, our standard procedures and rules require that on north side have the electrical connections mainly for the wire mount. You can have up the center the electrical interface for the flip chip if you want to use flip chip to connect your pick on top of your maybe electronic integrated circuit or directly to the PCB. And then on the east and west side, you have the optical interfaces. As I told you before, we use a specific system that is called optical shunt to align the fiber arrays on top of the pick. This is just uh, the connection through a waveguide of the first and of the last grating coupler of your series of grating couplers. So when you have an array of grating couplers, we just use the first and the last one to align the entire fiber array on top of the series of your grating couplers. This is fundamental because we can just take care of the alignment on the external grating couplers and we are sure that all the other grating couplers are perfectly aligned with respect to the core of the fiber. The same concept can be also applied for edge coupling. From the practical point of view, this means that when you choose the fiber array, two lines cannot be used for the specific purposes of your circuit. For example, if you want to use eight or 14 channels, you need to buy a 10 or 16 total channel fiber arrays. This is because, as I told you before, we need two of the total channels to be used to align the optical fibers with respect to the grating couplers or the edge couplers. The other fundamental aspect is the epoxy. The epoxy is, let's say, like a glue, and we use the epoxy to glue, fix, and secure the fiber arrays with respect to the grating couplers or the edge couplers. You can also use the epoxy, for example, to protect your most delicate photonic components. But from the other side, you have to pay attention because maybe covering something could be not the right choice. Imagine, for example, if you glue a laser, obviously the temperature could increase. So pay attention and be sure that you are respecting a specific area all around your grating coupler or edge coupler arrays that we can use to spread the epoxy. Uh, Francesco, just before we switch to the next slide, I think there's a clicking from your side. Um, uh, um, okay. Okay, maybe there's the mouse or the keyboard. Um, okay, thanks. Yeah. And uh, okay, so some example of uh, designs that you should avoid. In this case, for example, you can see that uh, in A and B, you are just uh, not respecting the opposite side for the optical connections with respect to the DC one. In this case, what happened is that uh, the design rules are not respected. So I'm not saying that, for example, it's not possible to package your system. The problem is that we can't use immediately by default our standard. This means that we need time to understand if the customization is reasonable, and this means more costs. As I told you at the beginning, just one hint regarding the electrical connection. We ask you to use the same concept for the electric connection, so the path displacement, that you use for the grating couplers or the edge couplers. So place the paths on a line and be sure that the distance between the paths, so the duty cycle, is at least 150 microns. Keep the distance between the edge of the peak and the bone paths between 50 and 500 microns. And be sure that the surface of the bone paths is enough for the solder to spread without covering the nearest part. The result is if you, for example, add the PCB, you have, as you can see in this case, on the north 
and south of your peak the bomb pads for DC connections. In this case, we place also the serial cable to interact with the electrical circuits on your peak on the south side. In this case, you see that the disposition of the electronic connections is immediately clear and uh, you can, without any problem, get access to the bats in order to make the solderings. In addition, on the west and east side, you can see the optical connections. In this case, we are using two the so-called horizontal fiber arrays, and I will show you later on the difference between this geometry and the other that is the so-called vertical. So the first option that we can give you is uh, the so-called edge coupling. In this case, uh, you can choose between two different types of fibers. The cheapest one and most used one, that is the so-called SMF fiber in A here on the left, is a standard fiber. In this case, uh, you can just uh, inject the light on one side and collect the light on the other side. But you have no control, for example, on the polarization state of your beam. The second option in B here on the right is the so-called PMF fiber. In this case, uh, the polarization maintaining fiber is a specific fiber that uh, can maintain the polarization of the state, so of your beam, while it's traveling inside your fiber. In this case, it's really important because unfortunately, edge coupler is not sensitive to TE or TM modes, so it cannot discriminate TE from TM. If you need, for example, a specific orientation for the polarization of your light, you need to choose the PM fiber if you want to use edge coupling as coupling scheme with your peak. The second option is resort to grating couplers. In this case, grating couplers are sensitive to TE and TM modes. And you have to design properly your grating couplers. When you ask for the grating couplers, you have to explicitly say if you need a TE or TM defined grating coupler. So in this case, the only difference is regarding the geometry. For grating couplers, you use only single mode fiber. You don't need the polarizing maintaining fiber. The main difference is from the mechanical point of view. So you can have two geometries. The first one, A, is the so-called vertical alignment. So you have a fiber that is vertically placed on top of the grating coupler. In the second case, using total internal reflection, you can place your grating coupler horizontally on top of the, on top of the grating coupler. This scheme is called horizontal fiber coupling and is actually the one that you can see here on the left. From a mechanical point of view, this is advantageous because in the vertical case, you have to work. And obviously the problem is that the risk of breaking the fiber is really high. If you imagine to see the shape, the final shape of your model, it's something that can be what you are seeing now. So you have a specific submount. You can also have, as in this case, a tech. So you have a thermoelectric system that enables you to control, stabilize, or reduce the temperature if, for example, you also have active components creating heat and increasing the temperature on your peak. And again, as you can see, you have on the north and south side of your peak and PCB, the DC electrical connection. And on the east and west side, you have the optical connections. This is the shape of the most general typical device that we can do. In this case, it's a little bit more complicated because we also are considering RF. So not only the DC and we have the tech, we have the external box. Then we have the peak place at the center. You can see north and south, the DC electrical connection. In this case, we also have on the east side, the RF connectors. We connect through wire bonds the peak to the external world and on the west side edge coupling fiber arrays. 
the reason why we ask you to, let's say, follow as much as you can the rules that we show you is just because it's better to know in advance that your pick is packageable and uh, let's say without resorting to strange fancy and sometimes critical ways to connect your pick to the external world well let's say it's just easier and better well ramsey i hope uh, i was able to cover all the basic rules uh, that we have uh, in our list. Yeah, thank you very, very much for that. That was um, we covered quite a lot there. Um, it was very interesting as well. But before we jump into the Q&A session, uh, there's, I see some questions already coming in. Um, let me tell you about what we've got coming up in the next uh, few weeks as well, over the course of the weeks. Um, so this is a webinar series uh, of multiple episodes and um, we'll be looking at things that in future episodes of um, uh, pick, it, pick and fiber attaches, how to optimize your waveguide to your fiber, um, thermal implications, um, but also looking at optimization techniques, uh, some data analysis, and also interviewing um, some technology leaders as well. So there's a lot going on over the next few weeks. And, um, and in fact, to keep up to date, a good place to start is following your practice on LinkedIn so you can get to see the, uh, the latest uh, updates. Um, but in terms of um, the next episode, so today we're kind of just talking about, okay, so we've, the episode one talked about the general packaging. Now episode two is, talk, is kind of specific now about your layout um, constraints. So giving you ideas of um, how the layout is orientated in your design. And then going in a bit further, even further, we'll be looking now uh, next in the next episode about fiber to pick, sp specifically in the next episode, edge coupling. And the episode after that will be uh, on grating couplers. Um, but for example, the edge coupling will be in two weeks time. So on the 21st of April, uh, same time, same place. Uh, but to keep up to date, you can uh, check the Europractice website. You can the webinars will also be available on our YouTube channel, so you can go and subscribe to um, Europractice YouTube channel. But again, like I say, some for the uh, up to date on LinkedIn is one of the best places as well. So follow us on LinkedIn. 